Well, how do you do, buckaroos? This is Joe Layden from Cowboys and Indians Magazine. And I'm very happy today to be speaking with Denim Richards because it looks like we're about to celebrate Denim Richards Week. On Sunday, he is going to be kicking off the fifth season of Yellowstone, uh, the phenomenally popular series in which he plays branch hand Colby Mayfield. And then just a few days later, on Saturday, he will be co-starring opposite Tom Wopat in County Line, all in on INSP. So, uh, Denim, how are you going to be celebrating Denim Richards Week? Um, well, this is the first time I'm hearing that it's Denim Richards Week. Um, I'm wondering if there's a key to the city that comes with it or anything. Um, but, you know, nonetheless, it's a, it's a pleasure. Um, thank you for having me. Um, you know, I think it's just, it's awesome. It's kind of like... Um, it's a little bit surreal, um, you know, to have multiple kind of programs on all in the same week. So really, I just kind of have a lot of gratitude. And I just thank all the people that are kind of been involved in this journey with me. Uh, of course, Yellowstone, uh, you know, coming just very, I mean, very soon. So, you know, November 13th on Sunday. Um, I mean, this is going to be such an exciting season for season five. And I'm really excited for everyone to be able to see me um, being something completely different as playing a sheriff. Uh, which I think is also fun because I love kind of staying in this kind of kind of western -y type of world. I think it's really exciting. Now, I understand you got your first taste of, you know, celebrity stardom, uh, being an entertainer uh, when you were in a, a Christmas pageant. <laughs> yes. Um, so when I was five years old, um, I was kind of notorious for, I wouldn't say acting out, but taking things to a little bit more of like the next level. And so finally, one of the time, you know, one of the teachers said, said, look, we're having this kind of Christmas performance that's going to be coming out. Um, it'd be like maybe the, anywhere between three and 500 people. I don't remember. Do you think that, you know, they went to my parents, do you think that your son would be interested in, you know, seeing, uh, you know, a burst from a song? And so they asked me and I said, oh, of course, I, you know, why not? I really loved it because during the time when you're learning like one plus one, two plus two, they're pulling me out of class because I have to start doing rehearsals for this thing. So I thought that this would be the great schooling hack. Um, if I perform, I get like, I get out of school and I really will always wanted that. And so, you know, I went and I did this performance. I was just so taken in by everybody. It was like, everybody's there to watch me. I mean, I was five years old. There's clearly, I was not the only person that was there. But in that moment at five years old, you everybody was there to see me um and just to see their reactions and their smiles i was like i always want this feeling and uh you know to my to my great benefit i've had the opportunity to kind of keep that process going although it wasn't as seamless as i thought it was going to be at five years old uh, but nonetheless i'm okay with where we are now i understand you you don't have anybody in your family uh who's actually an, an entertainer or in show business but you kind of got a little bit of a start for Yellowstone because your father is something of a horseman or is something of a horseman is he not? yeah he, um so pretty much uh he does like horse rehabilitation and so like he'll take horses and you know that are you know, have either been like abused or and or kind of neglected and he kind of rehabilitates them and um, that was something that was kind of very beneficial for me to be able to just learn the energy horses are very pure spirits uh, and so they're like what the most naturally uh, pure kind of animal that you can actually find. And so then they kind of absorb whatever energy that you have. And so that was really helpful for me to be able to utilize some of these tactics because when you're doing a show like Yellowstone, there's so much production that's going on. You know, people usually just see like the horses and the cattle, but behind that is, you know, a crew of 200 people, there's cameras, there's helicopters, you know, there's moving vans, there's so much going on. So being able to kind of have this different and deeper connection with the animals um, has really kind of been beneficial for me, um, you know, going on this journey of Yellowstone. Now, uh, you studied opera for a while? I did, I did. yeah, that was uh, fun. Um, I wanted to, I was always wanted to take on more challenging things as if the arts already by itself is not challenging. But I first got introduced to opera when I was like 15. And I was like, this is phenomenal. I was like, I loved 
the the dr like the drama of it all like I was always a very dramatic person like every time I always thought like being a good actor was like being able to just cry all the time or whatever like there's never nuance it was just like I was young so opera allowed for this extremely dramatic situation for three hours and so I wanted I started taking opera lessons when I was about 15 and a half 16 it was the first time I've ever cried um, in lessons before because it was so challenging. I remember being in one, I was learning this opera uh, or this aria called the Eric Hernick. Um, and it's like, you're playing like three different characters in this one song in this five minute piece. Uh, we were playing like uh, essentially like the, the father, the son, and then like the, the person that's coming to take the father away. And you like to jump right off the deep end of the pool. Oh right? yeah, it was it was ridiculous. <laughs> and I started crying because I was like, this is so hard. Um, but I just had such a tremendous appreciation for the arts. And I liken opera to the way that ballet is for dance, where I was like, look, if you can if you can master opera, which people spend their lives doing, I feel like you have a really good opportunity to be a successful vocalist. The way that people would think like Shakespeare is for, you know, for acting, ballet would be for dance. I kind of wanted the same thing to be uh, opera for me. And then I got into more musical theater and jazz um, after the, the opera thing kind of went, went away a little bit. Who do you look back upon as the first person to really encourage you? I mean, obviously your, your parents would have encouraged you, but who, who, in, who outside of your family do you look back upon and say, yes, this was the person maybe who believed in me before I believed in me? Hmm. Yeah, no, it's a great question. So in uh, when I was in seventh grade, um, I had missed uh, multiple days of school in a row. And one of the days that I actually missed um, was the day where we we're picking like our electives. And so people, some of my friends were like doing like home economics and whatever it was. Um, and then I ended up being thrown into like drama. And I was so upset because none of my friends were in drama. This was like, you know, this was where kind of the outcasts went, right? Um, you know, and I was like, there's just a bunch of girls in here. There's no guys. This is going to suck. Um, and so, you know, I pouted and they're like, well, look, come to school and you can pick your electives. And I was like, okay, touche. Um, so um, I ended up in this, uh, this drama class and um, our teacher there, we were, I kind of fought it for a long time. We would do a lot of improv. Uh, she would kind of do different scene scenarios and things of that nature. And I remember after I started warming up to it, I was like, look, we might as well appreciate it um, and kind of make the most of it. And so I, I allowed myself to get into it a little bit. And so I remember at the end when it was like our last day of drama, she had pulled me to the side and she was like, don't ever give this up. Like you have a gift, you have a talent, um, just keep this going. And, you know, I was in seventh grade, uh, but still to this day, wow. I still remember that. Um, I still remember her pulling me aside and she was so serious about it because it wasn't something that she had to do it wasn't she could have very easily just moved on. Um, but you know, apparently at that time she saw something in me that I didn't see in me. Um, and I'm, I'm happy that, you know, the most size allowed me to continue to cultivate that. Now you were actually working on a Western movie yes. when you got word about uh, Yellowstone. That's correct. Mm -hmm. Yes, yeah, so I was doing a movie called Mom for Chickasaw Rancher, which is out on Netflix uh, with Seth Meyer and Tommy Flanagan. And we were, I was doing this really, really intensive scene with, um, with Tommy. And at the end of the scene, um, or actually later on in the day, uh, he was, we were riding back in the van, back to the trailers. And he was telling me, he was like, man, he was like, you know, I got one of my best friends is doing this new show. Uh, John Lindsay is doing this new show, Yellowstone. Um, with Taylor Sheridan because they all come from the Sons, Sons of Anarchy world. And, uh, you know, it's going to be super exciting. It's going to be like kind of like this Western, you know, the you know, 21st century. Um, Kevin Costner is executive producing it. And you got to you got to be a part of it. Like, I think it would be amazing. And I was like, OK, well, if only it was that easy. Right. Just like got a part of it. Um, and so I called my team and uh, I was like, look, apparently there's this new show called Yellowstone that's supposed to be uh, the new kind of hit thing. Um, what can we do? And so they kind of called uh, after a couple of weeks. They couldn't really find anything. Like we don't see, like we see news articles that this is happening. We don't see cast formation. And I was like, well, they have to be casting soon because apparently it's supposed to be in production uh, at the end of August. And this was at this time, it was like June. And so um, they're like, okay. They called, finally I was able to get an audition. We sent them all these pictures and videos 
from uh, Mumford Chickasaw Rancher because in that it's a period piece from the 1860s where it also is a Western, I'm pushing cattle and all these other things. So we were able to use that. So I got in an audition and then 24 hours later, I was in a producer session with John Linson, John Papsideris, who's the casting director, uh, Taylor Sheridan, who was on Skype at that time because he was in Utah, um, just kind of telling me a little bit more about the show and, you know, how Kevin's, you know, starring in it. And I was like, wait a second, Kevin, Kevin's starring in this as well. Like, I thought he was just executive producing it. So you're getting like all this more juicy information and then you start really freaking out before you've even like read anything yet. Um, you know, but Taylor was, you know, he's such a confident presence uh, that he just kind of like, it's only assumes that you're going to be great already. And so he kind of just gives you the space to do that. And uh, I'm happy that I was able to settle in. Uh, and then six weeks later, after much anxiety and many arguments with my team about not calling me unless it has something to do with Yellowstone, uh, prayfully, I was able to get the phone call and uh, the rest is history. Well, now, um, Colby, in the course of the series, uh, well, he's uh, he's been offered a little little bit of sugar by uh, Peter. Uh, he doesn't really seem eager to sample that particular sugar, but uh, she's uh, she's de bound and determined to offer it to him. Uh, this is true. This is true. Uh, what is that uh, relationship? on screen and off screen how, how do you get that dynamic going man jen landon who plays teeter is so fun um super talented artist who's been doing it for a long time and um you know i remember uh at the end of season two we were uh filming a bunkhouse scene and taylor pulled me aside and he was like you gotta see this you gotta see this and i was like oh what's up he's like this is gonna be like uh your love interest uh you know for season three and i was like well this will be rich and so um, he shows me this video of her audition tape and he's cracking up in the whole, the whole audition, just laughing. And I'm like watching the tape and then watching him laugh and then watching her. And I was like, he's like, isn't that great? And I was like, Taylor, like, yeah, I think she's probably good. But I was like, aren't you supposed to be able to understand what she says? And he starts laughing. He's like, no, that's the whole point. And I was like, so we're just never going to understand what she says. And so when I first met Jen, you know, and you obviously I'm like, she's so different than what a teeter is right and so it's so funny because she's able to effortlessly just jump into this kind of over the top character um but it's so fun because colby like him to be like a little bit more reserved maybe a little bit more square um and she's kind of that wild animal that just kind of comes in and you know almost like with her hair on fire um and i think that that's really interesting because you know colby um i think that she's like wearing him down over the course of this, the, the, the episodes, he's just kind of like, you know, he was fighting it and now he's kind of like, he's just getting worn down. And I think uh, this season five, I think you're gonna start to see a little bit more of a softer side um, of Kobe, a little, maybe even a little bit more of acceptance, uh, even though I do be trauma bonded. So how long we'll be able to kindle that trauma bonding, I, I don't know, but for now, um, it's super fun to play with her. Um, and I'm like, super excited to, you know, continue to cultivate this very dynamic and confusing uh, relationship, you know, but it's a relationship nonetheless. So we'll take it. Well, I have to ask, and, I, and I'm sure this question has, has formed in the minds of a lot of people who, who like the show like I do. Uh, just what is it with you ranch hands? I mean, you're like, you're branded. Uh, you can't leave. I mean, is this like, you know, I don't know, a, a cult or something. I mean, you know, what's going on, man? It's interesting, right? Um, so the great thing about where we are right now, like Colby beforehand, one of the great things we know is that Colby was not a criminal um, before he got to Yellowstone because he didn't get branded until the end of season three, right? So for the first three seasons, he was not, he was not branded, unlike a Lloyd um, and a Walker who has come in um jimmy who came in instantaneously was branded so mm -hmm. you know for colby and for ryan you know we we know that we were not branded um and that we were kind of just people that liked to work we like to be outside we like to do this and obviously why wouldn't you want to work on the biggest ranch you know in the west um and have that opportunity to work on a fit we know on a ranch that provides that type of stability you know the great thing about one of the things for us personally being around like these actual ranch hands, these actual cowboys, you really see how they buy into 
everything that they're doing and they take such great appreciation for every single thing that they do and there's so much bonding that happens when you're just out in the middle of nowhere on a horse these kind of long days early mornings late nights whether it's raining snowing you know it's hot so there's all this just kind of camaraderie and i think that's kind of what the the ranch has is that's especially what the bunkhouse is you know we we want to go out and get the job done and then of course as the seasons go on uh naturally we find ourselves in situations that have nothing to do with us because people want to get back at John. Uh, and then we kind of become uh, one of those kind of easier targets. And uh, then we're forced to kind of take a different side. But, you know, we're all happy because this is kind of our family. Um, the harder part, of course, is is like what that begins to look like, um, you know, as the season is on. Um, and it is because you, you can't just like pick up and leave the ranch. Not saying that anybody wants to get up and leave the ranch. But, um, you know, it just it, it makes it for a very interesting kind of dynamic because we're all here, but we're also here because we're actually not allowed to leave. So it's almost like you got to just fall in love with your captor. Um, and I think that that's kind of interesting as well. <laughs> well, now, uh, in County Line, all in, uh, first time we see you, you're playing poker. And uh, I have to say, as soon as I saw you handling those cards, I thought, well, now, th this is not uh, this guy's, you know, not his first rodeo. It's not his first poker game. Uh, yeah. did, did you uh, draw upon um, some real life experience uh, to uh, look confident at the table? I may or may not have dabbled in one or two poker games prior to um, working in County Line. Um, when I was in high school i was like an avid poker player i thought that i was going to be a professional i begged my family to give me like ten thousand dollars to get into the world series of poker they uh, they said no i was very upset because i couldn't understand um why my family wouldn't want to give me ten thousand dollars in cash to a 15 year old to go to vegas to play poker with against three other three thousand other people it just was inconceivable to me um especially when i was like i have like point zero seven percent chances of winning that these are tremendous odds right um and so finally i you know i tried to convince my mom i was like look um why don't you give me half of that and i can do online poker she's like we're not doing that so i started doing a lot of home games um you know with my friends we would do 25 50 75 100 you know buy-ins at these home games and things of that nature now that's like where are we getting this money well obviously we're getting it from our parents uh, we can't make that type of money quick enough but nonetheless, I, I, I really thought that I was going to be a professional poker player. Uh, and uh, once I started like going on like a four or five game losing streak, it got really hard for me to sleep. And I was like, yeah, I don't know that this is necessarily for me. But, you know, if I decide later on in life that that's what I'll do, I'll pick it up and uh, we'll, we'll go forward. So nonetheless, uh, I do still play some home games, not super intense, but uh, it wasn't the first time I've ever held two cards in my hand. <laughs> Well, now you're a professional and um, you've been in this business for a while, but, uh, you know, Yellowstone, you're working, you know, with, a, you know, really a living legend, you know, yeah. Kevin Costner. Uh, in County Line, you're working with Tom Wolpat, who, you know, if you're of a certain age, you grew up watching, you know, Dukes of Hazard. Uh, are, are there days or were there days ever on the set where you looked around and said, damn. I'm working with Kevin Costner. Yeah. Damn, I'm working with Tom Wobat. Yeah, yeah. I mean, you just don't ever, there's no world when you're growing up and you say like you want to be an artist and then as you get older, you just want to be a working actor on something, on anything, anybody that will say yes. And um, to kind of have this opportunity to work with, you know, a legend in Kevin Costner, a legend in his own Tom Wobat, um, it, you really have to take it in. You know, there are certain days where you just kind of stop, you look around and you're like, man, like this is actually happening. Like it's surreal, you know, because like they're right there. And then they're just talking to you now. Cause like after, you know, with Tom uh, in doing County Line, we did two movies together. And so it was like, it was great. Cause we we're just kind of in it together immediately. Super fun to work with so much energy. Um, so professional and was able to give you so much information. And I tell people all the time, for me, being able to be a part of these types of shows with these veteran artists is giving me like 20 years of experience outside of my actual age because they're just able to impart on you so much. They've been in all these different decades and all these different generations. They've seen how uh, 
Hollywood has changed and adapted and moved on from things and moved off of things. And so kind of talking to you about how to pivot and how to make sure you're continuing to build your career and do that. These things are invaluable. And outside of them just being kind of these icons, they just impart so much wisdom. And if you're, if you could be a sponge, um, you were able to, you know, to sop all of that up. And, you know, the reality of it is longer you're around them, you'll need a bigger sponge. Um, uh, but you know, it's a great, great opportunity. I do, I would never take it for granted because it's like, you know, some of these things are like a once in a generational thing. Um, and so I just want to be able to take up as much of that information and impart it onto the next generation when the time comes. Now you've, uh, directed a, a short that's, uh, got some interest, gotten some acclaim, uh, the zoo. And as I understand it, you're, you're laying the groundwork, you're doing pre-production work on, on your first feature as a director. Uh, do you ever, you know, have the impulse to go up to Taylor Sheridan and say, you know, if you uh, need an episode or two of, uh, you know, Yellowstone directed, uh, I, I know a thing or two about that. Yeah. So with that being said, the answer was no, I would never uh, go up to Taylor and ever say I can do anything uh, on the show. I mean, doing the job that we do, I think is taxing enough. I think he would probably say, why don't you just focus doing more of that? Um, getting into the directing world uh, is such a tremendous feat. I have such a tremendous respect for everybody on production. And I believe that until you've gotten into a director's chair, you don't really appreciate the and how complex directing is because you're responsible for so many different areas of production. Um, unlike being an artist, we kind of like, we get our schedule, we show up at this time and we leave at this time. They're the first ones there, the last ones to leave. And when they do leave, they're already planning for the next day or for the next episodes. I mean, it's just a 24 a seven type of thing. And so, you know, one of the things that I've gotten to appreciate is Yellowstone is shot like a bunch of mini movies, right? Like every episode, like a feature film it's shot with that type of quality it's given that type of budget all of those things and so you really um that's a place to aspire to you know like that would be a place to be like look when i'm able to do something like this and have my name uh you know attached to a project like of this magnitude with this type of scalability with the livestock and the, i mean we're shooting in the beautiful places in montana right in big sky country i mean you just can't you can't make this stuff up, you know, and everybody has bought into the world, into the universe that Taylor's created for us. Um, and he, you know, and it comes through. So maybe one day as I continue to get more of my, my swimming legs, uh, it'll be something that maybe I will, uh, maybe I'll do, but, uh, I don't know that I'm ready to, to necessarily take on that challenge just yet. Well, now I know that, uh, Taylor Sheridan, uh, you know, never mind being branded, uh, for the ranch. I mean, uh, Sheridan makes all of you guys, you know, working on any of his series, you know, take a bow of silence and you can't reveal uh, too much or spill too many beans. Is there anything you can say uh, about what might be happening to Colby this season? Um, so this season is a season of change. Um, I think that we've seen so many different elements to all these characters. And I think this, this season, season five is going to be very interesting for the, the audience. I think there's going to be a tremendous amount of excitement. We have characters that, um, you haven't seen for a while coming back. We have new characters that are coming on that the fans are instantaneously going to fall in love with because they've seen them in other, uh, projects. And I think that that's going to be super exciting, but you know, we have to remember that because John is now governor of Montana. There's kind of, he has to leave the ranch for, you know, periods of time because he has, he has, you know, the office of it all now. So it's not just kind of the ranch. And so now there's more opportunities for the ranch hands to either do the right thing or to make mistakes. Uh, and sometimes we don't have the best oversight uh, with the things that we're doing. Um, and so I, I hope that Colby maybe makes a misstep here and there occasionally, but his heart is in the right place. But, you know, the season is a season of change. I think that the fans are really going to appreciate this. I think it's going to be very, very different than some of the other seasons without missing out on all of the Yellowstone of it all. Yellowstone has now just become a thing, right? Like, is it a Yellowstone thing? So without losing the Yellowstone of everything, I think Taylor just does it again, where he just adds another layer, another piece of nuance. And I think you'll see that he gets to experience that extra, that extra layer, that extra piece of nuance. 
Well, final question. Do you remember when it really hit you for the first time that you weren't just part of a, you know, a popular TV show, a highly rated TV show? You were part of a phenomenon. Right. Yeah. Um, I think it's still kind of sinking in, to be honest. I, I don't know that. Um, I, you know, it's kind of one of those things like in theater, you're taught, like, don't ever read your own press, you know, like, because it's, it's it'll kill you sometimes. And um, I think they've done a really good job for the past couple of years of kind of, we didn't really buy into all the things that we were hearing. We just wanted to keep our head down and do the job. And then as we started there, and then all of a sudden you just get flooded with articles from people that would never know Yellowstone, would never watch Yellowstone, have no business knowing what Yellowstone is. They're calling and they're, you know, this. I remember I was on an airplane a couple of months ago. I was heading to New York and these guys sitting right behind me were one of the guys was like downloading something on Netflix. And with the guy next to him was like, hey, he's like, you had to watch. He's like, have you watched Yellowstone? And he's like, no, I haven't watched it. He's like, no, stop downloading this. Go to this right now. Download the season. You got to watch it. And they're having a whole conversation behind me. They had no idea that I was sitting in, the, in, in front of them. But they're holding. And I'm sitting there and I was like, oh, my gosh. Then we're in New York City. And people are coming into the hotel, talking about how much they love Yellowstone. We're in Los Angeles, how much they love Yellowstone. And we're at that point, we're like, man, this, this might be something really special. And then as we started seeing like the hardline data that was coming out, you know, we're beating NFL teams, NFL ratings, you know, on, on Sunday and things of that nature. Then I think at that point, it was kind of like, all right, we, we may or may not have struck in a bottle with this one. You know, when you're, when you're kind of, when you're up there with the NFL, uh, I think that that's a pretty, I think that's a pretty good indication um, that we're, we're heading in the right way, that the tra trajectory is definitely in the right place. Uh, but, you know, it's one of these things, like I, I keep saying, it's a once in a generational thing. And so once you finally have been able to acknowledge that, I think at this point, it's just you embrace it. Um, you try not to allow it to change you, you know, from your morals and where you came from. But you really want to be able to appreciate the ride. And that's what we're doing now. We're just appreciating the ride. We have so much more to do. Uh, so we're excited to, to, to deliver so much more content. We know that we're going to be able to over deliver on everything that, that that's coming in the future. So we're super excited and we will always want to thank the fans because without the fans, we're not doing anything. So it's, it's a, it's a truly, it's a pleasure. Well, Denim, you've been very generous with your time. Thank you very much. And uh, we're all looking forward to Denim Richards week. Uh, first with the fifth season premiere of uh, Yellowstone on Sunday, the 13th. And then just a few days later on INSP on the 19th, uh, County Line, all in. Good luck to you. Thank you, sir. I appreciate it. Thank you.